People ask me all the time if the infinite banking concept actually works. And if so, how? So I'm about to go over the three main concepts of how infinite banking actually works and how one of our clients actually used it to make a crap load of money. So check this out. Now first, what is infinite banking concept? Because there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, a lot of stuff here on YouTube, of course. And again, it's kind of, it's kind of confusing, especially because most people teach it. It sounds like you have to be a freaking rocket scientist to understand it. But the truth is, is that you could make it as complex or as simple as you want. In fact, the simpler you make it, the better. Now the infinite banking concept was originally started by Nelson Nash. If you ever read the book, Becoming Your Own Banker, that's a great book that he had, he had actually wrote himself and gives you a lot of good examples of some basics how to use it. But remember, when it was taught that way, it was taught for people that were kind of like the Dave Ramseys of the world, the people that said, I hate debt, I never want to use debt. And so he tried to use this more different concept of how you're using whole life insurance, which using not the death benefit, but the cash value, that tax-free savings account, using that to go and essentially get a bank loan from the insurance company instead of from a bank. That's the confusing part. Many people think, oh, this has got to be something that has some sort of special aspect or like maybe it's in my own bank. It's not, an, it's not your actual bank. You are literally using a whole life insurance cash value, right? That tax-free savings account inside that life insurance to then use it to of course buy cars or whatever they might tell you to do. But I will tell you, there's, we're going to be doing other videos about where you shouldn't be using it and how you shouldn't be using it. And some of it's even things like buying cars. But here's the big thing. Infinite banking, really all it's about is using your money better, right? How do you use your money and get your money to work harder for you so you don't have to work so hard for it? Because the great thing is you do have this tax-free savings account that pays you more than point nothing percent like the bank does, right? And you don't get taxed, which is great. So you get protected from taxes, you make more than the bank, and in most states, you're protected from lawsuits and creditors. So you can actually keep that money for yourself. But what everybody teaches on in the traditional infinite banking is, hey, this is like your bill pay account. Hey, use this to buy a car or maybe buy your house. So then you can pay yourself back. But the truth is you don't. You don't really pay yourself back. Really what you're doing is you are paying interest to the insurance company. However, at the same time, you're, you're also getting paid on that money from the insurance company because you're not pulling the money out from your account. Your account's still there growing tax-free, compounding interest, while on the other hand, they're charging you interest on the money that you borrow, right? So for example, say you have $100,000 sitting in there, you borrow $50,000, as opposed to just pulling out 50,000 from the bank and then your 50,000 goes from 100 down to 50 and now you make less interest. Here, the full 100,000 is still being paid interest. While well, you have that 50,000 that you're now using from the insurance company that you pay like a bank and that money does get charged interest. But here's the cool thing. There is no minimum monthly payment. They do charge you interest and you do have to pay that at some point. But here's the cool thing. The deadline for paying that back is your death. And in worst case, they take out your death benefit and they pay the rest of your family tax-free. So that's the basic concept of how it works. So a lot of people you talk about using with bill paying and try to pay all your bills with it and somehow you make an extra 20 bucks but your life will suck because you just spent your entire life trying to figure out how to use it and all these little different nuances. I'm going to talk to you about really better ways of how, you, how I've used it personally as well as many of our clients to actually make more money with it. So one thing I want to kind of clear up too on this is that it's not just a great tax-free savings account, which it is, right? but it's got some other benefits too. One, this is money you put in with after-tax dollars. It grows tax-free, comes out tax-free. This is much like a Roth IRA, but it doesn't have the 59 and a half age rule where you have to wait till you're 60 years old to finally touch it and not worry about penalties. You don't have that problem. Also, another issue you don't have is you can actually put in not quite however much you want, but you can put in about usually about 25% of your stated gross annual income. So if you're making $100,000 a year, that means you can contribute $25,000 a year. But if you're someone who makes a lot more money, maybe you're making $500,000 a year. One, you have a couple problems here. If you make that much money, they don't let you do Roth IRAs very easily, do they? You have to do the little backdoor things. And that's if, the, if Congress doesn't close that door on you and say you can't use that backdoor anymore. And then two, not only do you not have access to Roth IRA, but then you're usually limited to how much money you can put in. But if you make a half a million a year, guess what? You can put in 125,000 a year into this plan to let it grow even faster. So that's one great benefit. The other one I mentioned too is that you don't have that 59 and a half rule. You can use this money however, whenever you want. That's the great news. Now, if it's set up properly, you can even use it within the first month when you set it up. Despite some things taught out there on the internet, because really there's crappy insurance agents showing you how to do this kind of thing. Usually you have to wait a couple of years or more 
depending on how it's set up before you even have any kind of cache to use. That's how my first one was set up and it sucked. It was horrible. But the good news is if it's set up the right way, you could actually have access to that money right away to a lot of the money that you're using. Now, here's another thing too. Here's another myth I'm gonna throw as a little bonus for you. I would do not recommend dumping all your cash in at once. If you do that, you will pay a lot more in fees, a lot more in cost, and the only person that's happy about that is your insurance agent because they make more commissions because of it. So don't do that. I like to have people put in steadily over several years so that they allow themselves to grow it faster with less money coming out in costs. So that's usually the best way to do it. Now, how do you actually use this? I use this a few different ways. One, I actually use this as really like, a, like I said, a tax-free savings account. I put my emergency fund in here because here's the problem with the emergency fund is that if you put it into the bank earning point nothing percent, like my credit union currently still pays 0.1% on the savings accounts. Well, my wife wants $300,000 just sitting in that savings account. If I do that, that means I only make 300 bucks a year in that bank and then I get taxed on that 300 bucks. So I walk away with maybe 200 bucks a year with 300 grand. And naturally you're thinking that doesn't keep up with inflation, that doesn't make me jack squat, why even have it? And that's exactly the point. So what I do is instead, as I've built that money up in my, my infinite banking policy over time, is that I have a 250,000 that I don't touch. I don't invest with it. I let it sit there earning right now almost 6% a year tax-free. And most policies will pay at least anywhere from five to 6% a year. And that's even in the low interest rate years. You, in the higher interest rates, it'll probably get higher above between six and 7% at that point. As a result, I keep most of my money there. Because think about it, if, if I only earn 5% on 250,000, I make $12,500 a year. Not 200 bucks, 12,500, that's tax-free to me. The other 50,000, I still keep in the bank because it's money I can get grabbed from day one. In the insurance, infinite banking, I might have to wait a week to two weeks before I get that money. But if I keep the 50,000 in the bank, I got the quick, easy access. Yeah, that makes my 50 bucks a year, whoop de doo And then, but still, I'm making over $12,000 better just by using this strategy. So even if I did nothing else, even if I didn't invest this in business or in real estate, I'm still doing better. Now, let me talk about how you invest this in business or real estate, because these are my two favorite areas where to invest. One, because let's be honest, banks only lend money for those two places. They don't lend money for you to put money in the stock market. It's actually illegal for you to put money, borrow it and put it into mutual funds. I remember because I had to have my clients, when I used to be securities licensed, I would have my clients sign waiver that says, I did not borrow this money to put in the mutual fund. Why? Because they don't want another Great Depression to kill people's money. Because that's what happened. Banks lent money to people, they threw in the stock market, stocks dropped, and the banks couldn't get their money back. So they do not want you putting the money in the market. But they do love you putting money into real estate and business. Because those things actually have better track records. So business, if you're a business owner, for example, one of the benefits here is that, say you wanna go and do a big marketing strategy, right? Like I remember I actually did a movie where it cost me almost a hundred grand to do that movie. And that movie, of course, you know, is a pretty penny, but it takes time for that to kick off some returns. Now, if you use a credit card for that, okay, that's okay. But remember, you're paying interest on that before you ever start to see the returns. Here, I can do the same thing. Yes, I have interest, but remember, they're also paying me interest to help offset the interest. So really, it's kind of a wash in a lot of ways. And so what happens is that I can use my policy to be able to fund and finance that project. Now, as the returns start coming in, say that that 100,000 starts generating, let's say even $5,000 a month, right? I know you want more of a return than that, but let's just say it's a crappy 5,000 a month from that 100,000. Well, that 5,000 a month comes back in, I pay back towards that line of credit, lessens the interest I pay, but also it still keeps allowing my money to compound and grow. So what happens is I end up making more money off of that than just liquidating all my cash out of savings, which can be a little bit risky, liquidating all that cash, and then that money earns nothing. Like I have to wait for it. So that's one way I can use it. If you do other marketing strategies, maybe you have a marketing strategy you wanna try, it's 25 grand. Great, do that. If it even generates 5,000 a month, imagine how fast it pays off that, that line of credit, which again, you can pay back however, whenever you want. There's no monthly payment, but remember, if the faster you pay it off, the less you pay in interest, but the more you're earning in compounding interest, allowing you to make money here and here from that marketing strategy. So you make money in compounding interest from the savings and you're making money from the strategy. You double dip. You make money in two places at the same time. This is also true in real estate investing. Like when I've done real estate investing, for example, like instead of just buying a property outright, I'll put a down payment on a property. Let's say I put the 20% down, down payment. Now I put that 20% down, that money's going, right? That's there. I'll get the 80% from the bank for the mortgage, but then I'll borrow the 20% from the insurance company. Now, what happens is, of course, 
as I get the cash flow from that property, as let's just say that, that I put down $50,000 down payment, the cash flow is 400 bucks a month or 5,000 a year. I take that 5,000 a year, pay it back towards that line of credit, paying it down, so I get charged less and less in interest, while it's paying me more and more interest on the side. So again, I make more net interest over here, and I still make the $400 a month over here. This has allowed our clients to actually shave off sometimes a year or two years towards their 10 to 15 year retirement type goal or financial freedom goal. They wanna to try to get out of the rat race, right? Where you, you become work optional, you work because you want to, not because you have to. This is a cool way to do that because it allows you to grow your money here, still make some net interest that allows you to keep investing faster. That money can turn over faster, letting you invest and buy more things and therefore creating more cash flow to get you done sooner. That's why I can shave off even a couple years on you on your towards your financial goals. Now, let me give you another example because some people will ask, okay, well, do I always have to pay it back? Well, the answer is no. Remember, I said you can pay this back however, whenever you want. One client I had, for example, she, she said, hey, Chris, last year, we put $125,000 into this real estate deal. Now, one year later, we've made $155,000 back. She said, I actually borrowed from my policy that $125,000. Do I pay back the loan or do I reinvest it? And I asked her, I said, well, let me know, tell me this, do you already have an investment lined up? Do you already have a place you're gonna put it? She said, yes, I actually do. I actually have another investment already lined up. Well, great. Well, instead of just trying to pay back the loan and pull it back out again, which is kind of an inconvenient factor, right? Instead, why don't we actually just have you maybe pay five or 6,000 of interest that you owe, you use that to at least keep the loan from compounding against you, and then take the other 150,000 and invest it. So now she's got all the extra cash that she can then use to reinvest again and again and again. So the cool thing is, she could keep that loan going forever. Like I said, the deadline is your death. You know, that's when they pay it off. And even if you have like this $2 million death benefit and you've borrowed a half million, great. The death benefit pays off the half million, your family still gets the other million and a half tax-free, right? So lots of different ways you can use this. And I'm not alone. I mean, many people have used this over time. That's why you've heard Walt Disney. This is how he started Disney World. The banks would not lend him money until he put up collateral from pulling money out of his house and collateral from the user's life insurance to then have enough cash to say, bank, Mr. Banker, is this enough? And then they said yes. So he used his life insurance to ensure that Disney World became the happiest place on earth, which is questionable depending on what time of day and who you're with, right? But it's true, like that's the cool thing you do. Bankers have been using this forever. Banks have actually been using this forever for many, many years as a strategy to help build their money, keep it safe while also allowing it to grow faster for you. So guys, that's the cool thing is there's so much flexibility, more than I can tell you in just a short video. Everybody wants to know how this really works. How does it work in your situation? How much should you do or should you do it at all? All great questions. As a free gift to you, free offer, what we'll do is actually connect you with someone on our team. Go ahead, you can go to moneyripples.com. Right there, there's a place you can book a call and find out like how does this really work for me, right? Again, no pressure, nothing like that. If this is not a good fit for you, we'll let you know because honestly, it's not worth it if it's not good for you. So go ahead and book that call. Go to moneyripples.com right now.